Hi, I'm Eric Demain, and I'm going to talk about folding small polyominoes into a unit cube. This is joint work with uh, Kingston Yao Tchaikovsky, uh, Martin Demain, my dad, uh, Kim Epling, Robbie Kraft, uh, Clara Mundilova, and Levi Smith. Uh, notably, uh, Kingston and Levi uh, are middle school students, and Kim, uh, when we did this work, it was a high school student. It's now going to join as an MIT undergrad. Um, and this is kind of a neat example of getting uh, not yet mathematicians involved in mathematical research. And I'd like to encourage you to do the same, and I'll show you how that worked. Uh, but the technical part is about how to fold a cube. You might think we know all the ways to fold a cube out of a piece of paper, but it turns out there's new things to discover. Um, so in particular, we have three new ways to fold a unit cube. This is a summary of all the results of this paper in one slide. Uh, so it turns out that a 3x3 three three, uh, square can fold into a cube. It's drawn. Um, it turns out that a 2x4 rectangle of paper can fold into a cube. Um, and it turns out that this U shape of seven squares can fold into a 1x1x1 one by one by one cube. Um, and so why are these results interesting? Uh, let me tell you some of the background and how we got to these particular questions and what they, what they answer. Uh, so cube folding uh, is very popular in origami. Uh, one of the most famous designs, uh, hundreds of years old at least, is the water bomb. Maybe you've made one. Um, but it turns out that folding is not particularly efficient. It takes a 4x4 four four square and folds it into a 1x1x1 one by one by one cube. Can you do better? This problem is well studied and completely solved. The smallest square you can fold into a cube is about 2.8 by 2. This is the folding. It rotates everything by 45 degrees and is proven optimal by Catalano, Johnston, et al. Uh, and if you want to see the proof of that, you can watch this video lecture from a class that I teach. These are the notes from that lecture. Uh, so end of story. If you want to fold a square into uh, a cube, that's, uh, that's the end. Uh, but there are some interesting other problems you get if you st start, instead of from a square, from a polyomino. Uh, so Martin Gardner, in particular, wrote about uh, this puzzle. How many of the 35 hexominoes, these are shapes uh, made out of six squares, hex means six, uh, glued edge to edge. So there are 35 different ways to do that. Which of them fold into a cube? For example, uh, the cross. But not all the hexominoes do. In fact, only 11 of them do. And this is well known. And Martin Gardner wrote about this in 1975. Uh, another problem that he posed in 1978 is uh, if I take a 3x3 three three square and I allow you to cut slits wherever you like, uh, can you make a cube? Um, and can you make a cube in a way that it's monochromatic at the end? If the paper is white on one side and black on the other, can you do it? And the answer is yes, this is the solution. Sorry for the spoilers. Uh, but the other question is how many different ways are there to do this? And this was analyzed a few years ago. Uh, by Dunham and Wilton, they enumerated the 28 possible cuttings of a 3x3 three three square down to a tree-shaped dual, uh, where we take a vertex for each square and connect them when they're still attached, not slit. Uh, and it turns out exactly 18 of them, the ones listed here, uh, can be folded into the cube where uh, we're only allowing folds along grid lines here. Um, and 12 of them make a monochromatic cube. Uh, so that's for a 3x3 three three square. Uh, and another direction is to think about strips, which are another other example of polyominoes. So this is what I'd call a septomino, 1x7 uh, strip of paper. And another classic result that Martin Gardner wrote about in the same article, actually, um, is that you can fold a strip into a cube. We just need one extra square beyond the 6 for the sides of the cube. So it's just double coverage on this uh, one face. Uh, so this raises the question of which polyominoes fold into a cube. Uh, and already you see that there's a lot of possible models for what that means. You could allow just folding along grid lines, uh, like this 3x3 three three problem. Or you could allow folding along grid lines plus 45 degree diagonals, like the strip problem. Or uh, a model that was introduced uh, in this paper, a bunch of us in CCCG 2015, and then journal version 18, uh, introduced another model that seems really interesting, and this is actually the focus of today's talk, is the half-grid model, where you can have 
uh, folds that end at half integer points. And this one's also at a half integer line. So the dotted line here is the, this is the three by three grid. Um, and we're folding on half grid lines plus diagonals between half integer points. Um, and then the most powerful model is that you fold anywhere, like in the very first example I showed you where we know the optimal way to fold a square into a cube. That's only if you allow this 45 degree rotation. Uh, and so you get like root two style grid instead of a integer or half integer grid. So all these models have been considered. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's known about these first two models before we get to the main focus, which is the half grid. So for grid folds, there's a partial characterization. Uh, if you restrict to polyominoes that have height two uh, or have height three, there's an efficient algorithm to tell you whether your polyomino will fold into a cube, only folding along grid lines. Um, and we're drawing the dual tree here. So this means there's a slit here. Uh, it turns out this giant polyomino, despite being so big, cannot fold into a cube. But if I added, for example, another pixel like this, it could. Um, and this polyomino uh, is 3 by n, and it also does not fold into a cube. Notably, it contains a 3 by 3 subpattern. And as long as you don't have these patterns, then everything else does fold into a cube. We don't know the general characterization, though. If you have, say, a height 4 shape, we don't know uh, when it does or does not fold into a cube along grid lines. So that's a nice open problem. If we add diagonal folds, at least for the 3 by 3 picture, nothing changes. So uh, this in the same paper, we enumerated all of the tree-shaped nonominoes. So these are size 9 polyominoes that have uh, a tree dual, so we do add slits until we can't anymore, that cannot fold to a cube using grid plus diagonal folds. We use this model because that was sort of the most general model that was easy to check by exhaustive enumeration. Um, and it turns out that the answer is exactly these 10 patterns are the ones that cannot fold. And if you remember from the three by three enumeration I talked about before for just grid folds, uh, there are exactly 10 impossible patterns. It's the same ones. So uh, adding diagonal folds doesn't help. And furthermore, there are no shapes of size 9 that are interesting other than the 3 by 3 square. Everything else can fold uh, via grid and diagonal folds into a cube. Uh, so these are the 10 remaining nonominoes. Uh, open problem from this paper is what, if, what about the half grid model? So we had back then one example that we knew that if we added these half grid folds, this particular example could fold into a cube, but we didn't know about the other nine. And we care about nonominoes because all larger shapes, any polyomino size 10 or larger, can always fold into a unit cube, even without the tree-shaped property. There's a series of reductions we showed, uh, this again at CCCG 2015, uh, that folds anything into a cube. So really, nine and smaller are the only interesting cases. We thought this was cool, and so uh, my dad and I prepared a set of puzzles to hand out based on this paper. Uh, you can download them from this link here. And there are many puzzles. Some of, most of them are solvable. But a few of the puzzles we said, these puzzles, we don't know whether they're solvable. In fact, it's an open problem whether they can fold into a cube using the half grid model. Uh, we knew and stated that it's impossible with only grid folds. So basically ignore these grid lines. Uh, but with the exception of this guy, uh, we didn't know uh, whether any of these other puzzles had a way to fold into the cube. And so this makes these open problems very accessible. Kids can cut these out and engage with an open problem, do research. If they do fold, then they can find an answer. If the answer is no, it doesn't fold, that requires more mathematical expertise. But it, luckily, in this case, we actually tried this at a few different workshops before someone solved it. So for a while, I thought these would be all impossible. But uh, this team, uh, which met at the Origami MIT convention, Origami convention last November, were mostly you know, learning how to fold dragons and things like that. The authors of this paper in particular came to this talk, and they all got curious and started cutting out these puzzles and folding them. Um, and uh, by the end of the day, like a few hours later, we had found a way to fold every one of those uh, nine remaining three by three slit patterns using the half grid model into cubes. But it's gonna be tedious to, to draw all eight of these different foldings. Uh, but luckily we found a bit later 
that uh, there's one crease pattern that works for all of them because it's possible to take this three by three square uh, and fold it into a cube without any slits. And if you can fold without slits, no matter how you add slits, that will only make folding easier. So I'm showing the crease pattern in the top left here, an animation in the top right, which is produced using Origami Simulator. Uh, this is mainly to verify that I got this crease pattern right, uh, where the blue lines are valleys, the red lines are mountains, the lighter lines are folded by 90 degrees, and the darker lines are folded by 180 degrees. Um, and then to verify that there's a, a legitimate folded state of this uh, object in 3D with proper layer ordering that avoids uh, any intersections, uh, we drew this, this uh, by hand. Um, and what I'm showing here is the back three faces uh, that would be underneath here um, in the folded state. So you can see these faces A, B, C on the back come from these squares of the crease pattern, which are uncreased. Um, and then C is attached along this edge, which is this edge, to uh, D over here. And then D, for example, is attached to E2, uh, which is here along this edge, um, which corresponds to this edge. So, I mean, you stare at this long enough and you can verify, yes, this is a valid folding of this crease pattern uh, with uh, proper layer ordering and so on. Okay, so that's... Uh, that's significant because this solves all of the remaining denomino cases. So previously we had solved all size 10 and larger, and now we've solved all of size nine because among the 847 possible tree-shaped denominos, previous work had solved with the grid and diagonal model had solved all but 10 of them. And then in the half grid model, we now have a way to fold all 10 of those remaining examples uh, because they're all subsets of the 3x3 three three square. So together, this tells us that all tree-shaped uh, 9 and larger polyominoes fold into a cube, which is pretty cool. Um, now, uh, there's one difference here, which is that we have this tree-shaped qualifier in the second result, but we don't have such a qualifier in this result. And so the conjecture is that, in fact, all nonominoes, and therefore all polyominoes of size 9 and larger, fold into a cube. And to prove this, you would need to uh, check not just the examples with all the slits, but the examples without slits. Um, and there are 438 such cases uh, where you have a cycle in the dual graph. We solved one of them, the three by three square, but uh, there are many other shapes uh, where we don't know. We've, we've tested a lot by hand, and that's why we're making this conjecture. Uh, so we're working on an exhaustive search that will prove this, but it's much harder to do exhaustive search in the half-grid model because you have to actually do origami. Um, the dual graph of the crease pattern is no longer just a tree, so it's a lot harder to do this search and check folding. Uh, so, but stay tuned for that. Uh, now, so that was for size 9, uh, and size 6, I said, is already solved because that's just the hexaminos that fold into a cube. What about sizes 7 and 8? So we don't have a full answer, but we conjecture we have an answer. And I've shown these examples already. But we have one size 8 polyomino, which is the 2 by 4 uh, rectangle. And we have one size 7 polyomino, which is the U shape. We show those fold into a cube, and we conjecture that's it. So we've already done an enumeration for these sizes of what folds with grid plus diagonals. Um, and the conjecture is that these are the only two shapes that need um, the half grid model and everything else is that wasn't foldable with grid and diagonals is still unfoldable in the half grid model. So here is actually an enumeration of all of the tree-shaped uh, septominoes, octominoes, and nonominoes that do not grid plus diagonal fold into a cube. Okay, so these are the ones where we don't know whether it folds in the half grid model into a cube. And the ones highlighted in purple are the ones that we've shown in this paper do fold into a cube. And the conjecture is that all of the non-purple examples do not fold into a cube. These are more open problems that anyone can engage in. You can just cut out these patterns for people. And if they succeed in folding it into a cube, that answers one of our open problems. Um, but the conjecture is that you can't. So this may be a fruitless effort, but I think it's still fun for, for people to try and engage with research. So uh, let me show you uh, the 2 by 4 folding in more detail. We've got the crease pattern, the animation, um, and the folded state. Here we get a nice kind of pinwheel 
uh, and two of the faces, um, but the faces are just stacked linearly, and so there's no no crossings there. Uh, and here is the U septomino. This one doesn't animate so well because uh, it's very non-rigidly foldable. Uh, so we're not making any claim about there being continuous, nice continuous motion here. And the animation, you see collisions and maybe a little bit of stretching. But this is mainly to verify that this crease pattern is indeed correct, because in the end, it makes a cube with no, no stretching. And then to check the layer ordering, we have to draw this diagram and check that the uh, everything can stack well. So what's going on, that most of this is just folding along grid lines. There's a little bit on the half grid, namely this vertex. Uh, and we're folding first along this line and then along this line. And so we end up with these four triangles stacked in a kind of nested way, but you can check that all of the edge gluings here avoid collisions. Cool. So that's a septomino, octomino, nonomino. Do, 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 do. Uh, if you want to make your own uh, animations like this, uh, here's a pointer to Origami Simulator. Go to origamisimulator.org, and you can draw these diagrams in your favorite drawing program and then uh, import them and you'll get these fun animations. So that's the topic of another paper, but a useful tool for the checking of crease patterns. Just to summarize again, these are the three new ways to fold a cube from polyominoes using the half grid model is the main new thing. We already knew that a smaller than three by three square folded into a cube, but that required 45 degree rotation. Now we have a way to do it uh, without the rotation on the half grid. Uh, and so the remaining open problems are can we, in fact, fold all nonominoes, not just the tree-shaped ones, uh, which would let us turn this 10 into a 9? That would be great. Similarly, for the size 7 and 8, we think we found all of them, but we may have missed one. So I invite you to join in this research. And more generally, I invite you to try to identify in your own research uh, if you can extract some of these kind of constant size open problems where you don't need to know mathematics to engage with them, where actually just folding a model could solve an open problem. I think it's a really exciting way to uh, get people excited about mathematics. And that's it. Thanks.